Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Christine Johnson. I'm from the City of Laurel's Communication Department. Just want to begin our annual Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service event. Just, we're gonna have a packed schedule, but we won't keep you long. But just wanna share with you that we're gonna have a welcome from the Honorable Craig A. Moe, our mayor. Our host, council member, Martin Mitchell will introduce a couple of speakers that we'll have this afternoon. Trivia to kind of keep you engaged. And because it is a day of service event, we are going to provide some volunteer opportunities so you can find out how you can share within the community. So with that, I'm going to open up the floor to our mayor, Craig Mo. Thank you. Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the annual City of Laurel Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, day of service. Although virtually again, uh, we're still all together. Uh, annually on Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, we honor the lasting legacy of a great American and we remember the ideals for which he fought. It's time, it is a time for our nation and our community to remember the injustices that Dr. King fought for, a uh, time to remember his fight for freedom, equality, and dignity of all races and its people. It's a time to remember the message of change through nonviolence that he supported and we still have uh, much to do. With uh, all of us working together, I believe we can achieve his dream. Uh, today, we celebrate his memory by performing acts of kindness through our day of service program. And for that, I wanna thank all of y'all for taking part in that. My thanks to the Department of Communications, especially uh, Ms. Christine Johnson for her planning and hard work on today's program, building community, working together. Again, uh, I want to thank you um, for signing on today. I want to remind everyone to please stay safe, and uh, you can do that by getting your COVID uh, vaccine shots. Vaccine shots. So I just do want to remember you that on this uh, special day as well. So, Christine, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mayor Mo. So, Council Member Mitchell, it's on you. Greetings, everybody. So we are here. It is Sunday, uh, the 16th, uh, Martin Luther King Day. We're celebrating a little bit early. Uh, tomorrow is uh, Martin Luther King Day. And like uh, Christine mentioned, uh, there will be a bunch of services you guys can participate in. And, um, you know, the thought is, is you shouldn't wait until Martin Luther King Day to, you know, participate in, in acts of service. Uh, so, you know, this can happen, you know, any time of the year. And, um, of course, I wanted to, to share some, some words uh, before we got to the first speaker very briefly. Um, and I, and I, thought it fit the, I thought it fit the theme of community. Uh, so do not be daunted by the enormity. Do not be daunted by the enormity of the world's grief. Do justly now. Love mercy now. Walk humbly now. You are not obligated to complete the work but neither are, are you free to abandon it. And so with that being said, I wanted to get right into the first speaker. Um, the first speaker, her name is uh, Marilyn Dawson. She was uh, raised in the majestic mountains of uh, Colorado Springs. Uh, inspired by the civil rights movement, she joined the Black Panther Party in the 1960s when they came uh, from Oakland, California to her small mount mountain Western town. Marilyn was inspired by their message of self-determination. You, you must be all you can be for your community. Jesse Jackson spoke at the Air Force ceremony after she heard uh, Martin Luther King saying, let freedom ring from the snow-capped mountains of Colorado at the March of, uh, on Washington. It was a clarion call to volunteer. Ms. Dawson is grateful for the life-changing message from the Black Panther Party and from MLK and the Civil Rights Movement. And I just wanted to, of course, uh, your your bio was incredibly long, but I want to give you the time to, you know, speak, Ms. Dawson. And of yeah. course, you know, thank you for joining uh, joining us in Laurel and moving back to, um, you know, Maryland. Well, thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I am passionate about community service and volunteerism, as you had stated. It, they came to, when I was a teenager into my little town in Colorado Springs. And when I 
when I heard Martin Luther King even acknowledge the mountains of Colorado, because I don't know how they found us. We're just a little teeny town sitting on the foothills of the mountains. But, you know, the message to me was self-determination and that that message to me was that you had to educate yourself and you had to become your best self, not for yourself, but for your community, for your family and every, in your nation. And so the Black um, Panthers and the Civil Rights Movement really propelled me to come to, um, well, before that, do community service in my community. We did community events, cleaning up neighborhoods, cleaning up the creeks. We held, um, we were a big military town, so we held events for many of the soldiers coming back from Vietnam. They were 18 and 19. And so we had community events for them and we just worked with the seniors and it was just an exciting time to, in the sixties to really serve your community. And so we didn't have enough black people in Colorado to just, in, in my little town to say Black Panthers, everybody was included. So we had Native Americans from lots of different tribes. We had um, people from Mexico and we had Asians and just everybody. And so my message was that everybody worked together in love to change the landscape of the world. And so when they had the civil rights movement and then after Martin Luther King got assassinated, I was just compelled. I had to go to Washington, D.C. So I came here and self-determination is that you become the best that you could be. So I became a RN and worked in the inner city hospitals and the trauma centers and the drug centers. And, and that, was, that was just amazing, taking care of those, those lost and impoverished people. And then I decided that health wasn't really the answer in the hospital. So I created a day spa because you have to create something to help your community thrive. So I created a wellness center where we did for 23 years, just educating and helping people to not be in the hospital and to not be stressed out. And then from that, I had an outreach and we went into the shelters, into the prisons, just every place that we could do to do community and volunteer work. I went back into the hospitals, did make up for the cancer patients. I mean, there's always something in your community that you can do to empower other people. And the best thing about it is when a little senior holds your hand and says, thank you, or somebody comes and hugs you and say, thank you, you changed my life. That's a reward right there. So. My message to everybody today is self-determination. You owe it to your community to get an education. You owe it to yourself to be the best person that you can so that you can go back and do something important to change somebody else's life. And so if you have the privilege where you can get out and get about and do everything that you can, then that's what you are supposed to do. So we thank you for this day of volunteerism I know that there's a lot of opportunities here in Laurel, and even if I have to walk around with a cane or in a wheelchair or anything, I'm going to help somebody until the day I die. And so I thank you all for this opportunity, and hopefully everyone will get in that spirit of volunteerism. We can change the landscape of our communities. We can change our family. And get this, we can change the whole world just by a touch from us. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Dawson. And just one key point I wanted to, to highlight that you mentioned was in your small town, it didn't just have enough black people uh, to advocate. Of course, you, you used everybody and involved everybody. Yeah. So that, that's similar to, you know, Dr. Uh, King with the Poor People's Campaign, you know, and the Black Panthers. It wasn't just about, you know, getting, um, getting black folks involved. Yeah, it was about everybody. Everybody. It was yeah. marvelous. <laughs> that's Absolutely. what I love about Laurel too. It reminds me, oh. Laurel to me is a mirror of Colorado Springs. That's why I fell in love with Laurel. And so I love Laurel and I'm here for a while. I'm going back to Colorado to help oh, all I can. <laughs> okay, well, well, thank you, Ms. Dawson. And, um, you know, I appreciate you joining us today. Thank you. So I, if I'm correct, I have Dr. Lewis. Dr. Lewis, you still there? Yeah. Okay, so so the 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 very esteemed Dr. Lewis, uh, Dr. Lewis, he is a a tenured professor at Bowie State, uh, you know the illustrious Bowie State University, uh, of course one of the first HBCUs in the state of Maryland, and um, of course there's there's still big things to come from Bowie, 
um, Dr. Lewis, he was uh, actually my, my history and government teacher in college. So when, you know, I, I had the opportunity to, you know, in, invite someone I thought would be great, you know, Dr. Lewis, you were the first person that came to mind. Yeah, just, 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 just don't tell them about that homework I forgot, you know, that one time. <laughs> no, I'm, just I'm just kidding. No, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> It, look, it looks like you have a student here uh, on, on, the, on the line, Dr. Lewis. That's awesome. Okay, well, Dr. Lewis, just uh, just get in with you. You have uh, a speech on the site for us? Yes, I do. Okay. And I want to thank you for uh, for inviting me. And also, Ms. Dawson, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I looked at a theme that is building community, working together. And then I consider a number of right uh, speeches done by Dr. King. But the one that comes to mind is the commencement address at Lincoln University in Pennsylvania on June the 6th, 1961. I think it is very appropriate on this occasion based on the title, The American Dream. I shall read portions of that, the American dream. Today, you bid farewell to the friendly security of this academic environment, a setting that will remain dear to you as long as the cords of memory shall lengthen. As you go out today, you enter the clamorous highways of life. I should like to discuss with you some aspects of the American dream. For in a real sense, America is essentially a dream, a dream as yet unfulfilled. It is a dream of a land where men of all races, of all nationalities, and of all creeds can live together as brothers. The substance of the dream is expressed in these sublime words, was lifted to cosmic proportions. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unamiable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is the dream. One of the first things we notice in this dream is an amazing universalism. It does not say some men, but it says all men. It does not say all white men, but it says all men which includes black men. It does not say all Gentile, but it says all men, which includes Jew. It does not say all Protestants, but it says all men, which includes Catholics. And there's another form, and there's another thing that we see in this dream that ultimately distinguishes democracy and our form of government from all of the totalitarian regimes that emerge in history. It says that each individual has certain basic rights that are neither conferred nor derived from the state. To discover where they came from, it is necessary to move back behind the dim mist of eternity. For they are God given. Very seldom, if ever, in the history of the world as a socio-political document expressed in such profoundly eloquent and unequivocal language, the dignity and worth of human personality. The American dream reminds us that every man is here with a legacy of worthiness. Ever since the founding of our nation dreamed this noble dream, 
America has been something of a schizophrenic personality, tragically divided against herself. On the one hand, we have profoundly professed the principles of democracy. And on the other hand, we have sadly practiced the very antithesis of those principles. Indeed, slavery and segregation have been strange paradoxes in a nation founded on the principle that all men are created equal. This is what the Swedish sociologist, Gona Madero, referred to as the American dilemma. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Lewis. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. And um, let me see, very next person. We have a uh, Laurel business owner. Laurel business over um, Dave Singleton. You know, for any um, for anybody who doesn't know Dave, he's the owner of uh, DC Ohm on Main Street. Um, very, very nice. Very nice place. I, I just recently got my hair cut there about two weeks ago. Dave took great care of me. But one of the things that I've, I've noticed initially coming into Dave's shop was if you look at the designs and the way that um, and the way that his business is set up, you can see a bunch of black excellence. So you see like old um, records. You see uh, photos. It's just it's very cool. It's very cool and then like you know a flash back into the past. Um, so Dave, with no further ado. I just wanted to introduce you. This is Dave Singleton. Thank you. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to say thank you uh, for allowing me to um, speak. I'm truly honored um, for, uh, you know, in the wake of Black History Month, you know, to speak on Martin Luther King's um, birthday for the Lord event. Um, I would like to uh, say, first and foremost, as, you know, one of the many black owned businesses on Main Street. Um, I feel elated. And um, I didn't really prepare a speech, you know, for say for this event, but I wanna just kind of talk freely um, from my heart. And um, coming to Main Street, Lord, I had just relocated from Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I was living in Atlanta, Georgia and my, my um, my my place of work at the time was about two, maybe less than two miles from Ebenezer Church. And I used to eat at the um, Your Beautiful Restaurant, which is directly across the street from um, the church. And I remember the inspiration, you know, I, I, I was going to the restaurant with one of my coworkers and, you know, just out of the blue, he said, hey, you, do you know that's uh, Martin Luther King's church right there? And the inspiration that I felt when he kind of said that just kind of just stuck with me and transcended, you know, with me. You know, I didn't stay in um, in Atlanta long. I stayed there about a year and then I relocated back to um, law. And I didn't know anything about law. Actually, I grew up in, in, in the DMV in Washington, D.C. and in Hotsville. And um, so I didn't know anything about law. So I, I I rented a, a loft here on Main Street, which was Patuxent Place at the time. And um, I would walk the streets and I just kind of fell in love with the, um, the historic district here in Lowell. And, um, you know, there were so many different, you know, I can go on and on and on about my experiences here, but, um, I'm so glad for the progress, you know, at that time, there wasn't many black owned businesses, you know what I mean? And um, I had made my mind up then, just from that first, you know, year when I returned, I said, I'm gonna own a business here on Main Street. And, you know, you're thinking over 25 years ago. And I wanna say that experience from just Atlanta and just seeing the Ebenezer Church, even though I didn't attend it, still transcended with me back here to low. And uh, here I am <laughs> on Main Street owning a business along with um, several other Black-owned businesses. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just inspiring. 
it's just inspiring that his dream still goes on. And I just wanted to tell everyone to just keep believing and keep dreaming. And um, let's just keep moving. And um, I want to wrap it up. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. And and I think I, I actually first met Dave when, when we did an interview at your location um, talking about the, the Laurel March for Black Lives rally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm definitely, you know, very, very grateful to meet you, Dave. I appreciate you. Likewise, Marty. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, Ms. Johnson, I think uh, we can we can cue the video Right. So um, just before that, I just want to remind everyone to take a look in the chat for our panelists and speakers. You're getting some great feedback in there. They're thanking you for your messages. We can't hear the participants, but they are really engaged in what you're saying. So take a look at that. And thank you so much for um, sharing with us. They do appreciate it. And Martin, your um, segue, what you did to um, Mr. Singleton about the Black Lives is a great segue for the video. So we're just gonna um, take a little moment and share a brief video from the um, Black Lives Matter protest that we had here in Laurel. We have a video about that. So let's see if I can work this thing. Hey, and with that, I think we have a um, student from Laurel High School. Yes, thank you very much, uh, uh, Christine. And so we have uh, Kenneth Moore. Kenneth Moore, he is a, a Laurel High School senior. Uh, he's involved in uh, the school marching band. He is uh, the captain of the, the Laurel High wrestling team. He is also is a SGA vice president. He's SGA vice president. And he enjoys, oh, oh I, I can't forget choir. He's also, he all, he's also in choir. Um, and I enjoy, he enjoys helping others and working towards a better future uh, for his family and his friends. And, you know, having the opportunity uh, to know Kenneth for about, you know, at least four or five years uh, since, he was, since he was a freshman, you know, I know that he's an upstanding young man. And, you know, it's very great that he can come after uh, the rally because, you know, Kenny was actually one of the speakers at the rally. And, you know, one of the, the students that actually, you know, helped bring the idea to life. Um, so, you know, Kenneth, with no further ado, uh, the stage is yours. 
Thank you, Coach. I really appreciate it. Um, so I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm a little bit nervous. I don't often speak about uh, things like this. Uh, even when I was at the Black Lives Matter protest, I was really nervous. But Martin Luther King it, uh, made the world for me that I live in today. I couldn't live and enjoy the things that I do, like track, mar I mean, not track, marching band, choir, all that different stuff without his influence and making me be able to do the things that I am today. And it's really crazy to think about because we could be anywhere without certain people in our life that makes inspirations for us and whatnot. It's just really crazy to think about that we really could we really could be in a scenario as colored people or black people in general, every race that we couldn't we were segregated. It, it, it's it's phenomenal to think about how just one person, one person just made a change for everyone, and it's it inspires me to keep making that change every single day. And that's what made me want to be speaking in the Black Lives Matter movement when we uh, did the stuff at Laurel. It's, it just really pulls on my heartstrings. It makes me wanna do better and better myself and help better other people so that we don't have to still go through the stuff that we're going through today, like George Floyd and stuff like that. It's really crazy that, you know, <laughs> it's really crazy to think about that even with him being around and one person making such a change that we still have to keep going through. And it's even crazier to think about when, uh, <laughs> it's even crazier to think about even in schools and stuff like that, I haven't heard anything about MLK since middle school. And that's crazy, right? So I feel as if we carry on that torch towards to a better future. So we have to keep carrying on this legacy, like doing stuff that we're doing right now and telling our kids, our kids' kids and all that stuff to make sure that we don't regress and get better and always move up another level. And thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you, Kenneth. Thank you. I mean, I couldn't tell you were nervous, Kenneth. You, you got you got comfortable there, and um, so we'll we'll go to our keynote speaker. I'm sure everyone you know is familiar with our keynote speaker, and you know I just wanted to say a few words. Of course, um, you know a few months ago, Fred Smalls and I were on the other side of a ballot, but you know right now and since then, you know we've uh, continued the conversation and you know try to see how we can you know better the community. Um, and so with no further ado, I'll mention uh, Fred. He was born in Washington, D.C. He was raised in the uh, 1960s. Uh, that was marked by the civil rights era, the Vietnam War and anti-war protests, a cultural revolution and the generation gap. He earned an associate's degree in advertising uh, design and ran a small graphics business for a few years. Uh, Fred served honorably in the U.S. Army as a member of the president's own old guard during the Vietnam War. He's been married for more than 30 years and has raised his family in Laurel. Fred served as a member of the Laurel City Council, representing the residents of Laurel's Ward 2 for 17 years, uh, stepping away in 2019. Uh, he is currently employed as Assistant Secretary for Operations and Finance by the State of Maryland, Office of the Secretary and State, uh, Office, of, Office of the Secretary of State. Uh, where he is responsible for all aspects of agencies, fi uh, fiscal and administrative management. In 2020, he was appointed by the Prince George's County Executive to serve as a member of the Prince George's County Fire, Fire Commission. And uh, he currently chairs the University of Maryland Medical School Citizens Advisory Council and was appointed by Mayor Moe as chairman of the Lower Board of Appeals. He serves as, member, uh, as a member on the Lower Regional uh, hospital Board of Directors and as Board Chairman and, and member of Dimensions Healthcare Board of Directors, where he played an active role in early decisions related to the Prince George's County uh, Regional Medical Center and the Laurel Medical Center, which is currently under construction. Um, his uh, proudest accomplishments is being a husband, father, and grandfather. Whew, that was a mouthful. But uh, now, 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 now you have Fred, and uh, as you can see, he's very accomplished. Thank you, Martin. Martin, I did give you editorial privilege, so you, <laughs> you could uh, edit that. Uh, <clears throat> before I make my remarks, I just want to comment on <clears throat> the, the march uh, in Laurel that took place uh, a summer or two ago. Uh, and I stood out, I couldn't unfortunately act do an active participation. I was 
just recovering from uh, surgery. But I stood uh, on Cherry Lane and I watched with an enormous amount of pride to see uh, the, the, the coming together of young people. And when I learned that the organizers of this event were high school students, I, I, I was, I, I, I just can't say enough about uh, the pride that I felt uh, at being a, a resident of this city, a member of this community, uh, and to see the turnout that that event uh, brought about. Uh, so my hat off to everyone that was involved, whether you were just a marcher or an organizer, fantastic job, and it was a great, great uh, day of unity. So today, Dr. King is widely revered uh, by, by many Americans. However, when I was in my teens, I saw him as a figure of considerable controversy, reviled, not revered by many white and black Americans. He was controversial for the tactics and achievements which are now granted as just and reasonable. You see, he agitated, demonstrated, and argued for equal rights for Black Americans and for all Americans. And as Mayor Moe stated in his remarks, he was concerned not just with civil rights, but moral justice for all. So I think it's fitting that on the day that the city of Laurel observes Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, we take stock in how far the nation and our city has come toward hitting Dr. King's ideals for a more perfect union. Isn't it the obligation of every generation of Americans to do everything in our power to pass along the next generation of Americans a nation that's better broader, richer, and deeper in love and inclusion than the generation that came before them. Diversity and inclusion are important because our city, workplace, and schools increasingly consist of various cultural, racial, and ethnic groups. We can learn from one another, but first, we must have a level of understanding about each other in order to enable collaboration and cooperation. We must continue work to make our city an inclusive city by embracing Dr. King's dreams. Now here's a bit of a history lesson. The date was June 23rd, 1963. The event was the Walk for Freedom in Detroit, and it had approximately 125,000 participants and turned out to be one of the largest and greatest demonstrations of freedom of its time. The march itself was Dr. King, uh, doc, the march itself was to Dr. King and his supporters, partly a practice run or precursor to Dr. King's famous I have a dream speech given just weeks later in DC as part of the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. Now it should be noted that due to the greater size of the March on Washington, the uh, Detroit Walk for Freedom has somewhat been lost to obscurity uh, at, just outside of uh, the local Detroit history. However, at the time, Dr. King called it one of the most wonderful things that has happened in America. The walk to freedom had two main purposes. The first and main purpose of the march was to speak out against segregation and brutality that met civil rights activists in the South while at the same time addressing concerns of African-Americans in urban North inequality in hiring practices, wages, education, and housing. The second purpose of the march was to raise funds and awareness for the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, the SCLC, which was an organization that did civil rights work in the South 
and was organized and chaired by Dr. King. The SCLC was the organization that launched the Poor People's March in DC in 1968. So now 59 years have passed since that day and sadly, the flames of racism still burn in this country. Many people speak with a sense of optimism, but also impatience. They say this is the time to stand behind each other for equality and unity. With demonstrations and calls for change still happening to this day around the country, we can all look back at how Dr. King's words still resonate. All across the country, work is being done to close gaps in e equity and opportunity by advocating for an inclusive society, affordable housing, racial equality, small business support, workforce development, voter rights, and financial well being. All of these components to creating a world where everyone has an equal opportunity to prosper. Now in 1994, Congress passed the King Holiday and Service Act, designating the Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday as a National Day of Service. It takes place every year, as we all know, on the third Monday of January, and is the only federal holiday observed as a National Day of Service. And it's been dubbed a day on, not a day off. The day of service calls for Americans from all walks of life to work together to provide solutions to our most pressing national problems. The day of service is intended to empower individuals, strengthen communities, bridge barriers, create solutions to social problems, and move us even closer to Dr. King's vision of a beloved community. So participation in the MLK Day of Service has grown steadily over the years with hundreds and thousands of Americans every year engaging in projects such as tutoring, mentoring children, uh, painting schools, senior centers, delivering meals, building homes, and reflecting on Dr. King's life and teachings. Many of the projects started today continue to engage volunteers beyond the holiday and impact the community year round. Mayor Mo, Council President Smith, and all the members of the city council encourage residents to engage in volunteer or virtual communities. And I think we'll uh, get a rundown on some of that, uh, some of those that are available. Um, uh, uh, in observance of the holiday and a day of service honoring Dr. King. So I'll close with a quote by Dr. King that I think is fitting for this occasion. Many have all come, I'm sorry, we may have all come on different ships, but we're in the same boat now, directly from Dr. King, Martin, I wanna thank you for, for the invitation to speak. Uh, I wanna thank Mayor Mo uh, and organizers for putting this event on today and God bless you all. Thank you uh, very much, um, Fred. And um, we appreciate your words. And um, I think Miss Miss uh, Christine, we have uh, trivia, is that correct? Right. So it's funny. Um, and someone wrote in the comments, too, that um, Mr. Smalls gave us a history lesson. So he talked about some of the things that I have questions about. So now what I have to do is see if you all were paying attention, see how fast you can type and get those answers to me in the chat. Just a couple because we had a few minutes and it was some good information that was shared. So I just want to do a couple of trivia questions. So your hands on the buzzer, your hands on the keyboard. So we're talking about Martin Luther King Jr. today. When is his actual birthday? The month, date, and year. Give me all of it. Let's see. 
participants can put in the chat, right? And no Googling, right? No Googling. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> January 15th, uh-huh. I missed my screen. 1929, let me see. Uh, my screen is too big. I can't see my other stuff. <laughs> okay. All right, January 15th, 1929. Ding, ding, ding for those with the right answers. Thank you, thank you. Okay, next question. When was he assassinated, month, date, and year? Four four sixty-eight. Yes, that's what we have. Thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. Mom, um, Mr. Smalls did mention this. Let's see how fast you can type. What civil rights organization did he found? So who was paying attention? Oh, yep. Yeah. I think your letters are wrong, Sidney. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say there we go. I was about to, I just the same thing. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh no, it's spelled it correctly. But. There we go. There we go. The C, the S C L C Southern. What was that? Let me read it. Southern Christian Leadership Conference. All right. What college did he go to? What college did Martin Luther King go to? All right, Gabrielle, quick. Morehouse. Thank you guys. <laughs> All right. Another easier one. Uh, Martin Luther King's wife. What's her whole name? Well, not whole name, but you know what we say. Let's see. Gabrielle is on it. Coretta yeah, Scott she, King. Thank you. Money. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she didn't have my answers beforehand. She didn't have my questions beforehand. Um, uh, a few more. Um, when? How many children did they have? The Kings. How many children do they have? Okay. Timmy beat you this time, Gabrielle. She said four. Thank you, Sherry. And let me see if I have one more. Okay. I wanted to ask about his prize, but it says, how old was he when he won the Nobel Peace Prize? So not the year, but how old? Do you know how, was, how old he was? He was the youngest person to receive it, but how old was he when he received it? the Nobel Peace Prize. Anybody? To be the last one, whoever gets it first. Gabrielle, woo good job. Question mark, you were right. He was 35. So thank you all. It's just something to get us um, sharing some information. Oh, I'm sorry, Kenneth. They didn't teach you that in school. <laughs> that's, that's what Google is for too. Okay, so thank you guys. I just wanted to... Um, have a little fun with you with the little trivia. Um, we did hear from, you know, volunteers in the community. We heard from business people in the community and also members of our um, city government. So we were well represented in this um, event today. I'd like to share with you now my screen again so I can share with you the volunteer um, resources. Again, with COVID, you know, we're not able to do a lot of stuff in person but there are still ways that we can volunteer and give back. And a lot of you um, reach out to me, you um, asking for different opportunities. So when I'm aware of what's going on, I do try to make that available. But let me pull up this screen so I can share with you some information. Mm, I got a lot going on over here, let's see. Okay. So first and foremost, like I mentioned, we do have our resources on our city website. So if you go to the link listed there, and I can send this out via email if anybody needs this information, um, but we have a volunteer website where we list different organizations and the opportunities that they have available. So that is the link for that. Um, if you want to volunteer with any event that we have within the city, we have an online volunteer form that you can fill out. We receive that information and then you basically join a um, email distribution list. So when we're aware of different things that go out, just like this event here, I was able to send it out to our email blast to let our volunteers know what's going on. If you fill out that form, you become a part of our email distribution list and we send you out information about different opportunities when we're aware that they're going on. So that's something else that you can do to get on that list. 
and then within the city. So our Parks and Rec Department, not sure if anyone is aware of this or how many people are aware of this, but they provide community cleanup buckets. So all you have to do is call the Parks and Rec Department, schedule a time to pick up buckets, um, the things to pick up the stuff in the streets so that you can clean your community. So you can organize an event. Um, you can set up something with your HOA, your condo association, schools, if you want to clean up a certain part of Laurel, and we will provide that for you. All you have to do is give Parks and Rec a call, and then we'll also uh, make sure that Public Works picks up the trash. So all you have to do is organize the event. We provide everything for you. Also, Parks and Rec is going to have um, Patuxent River Cleanup. These are um, events scheduled for April the 2nd at 9 o'clock at Riverfront Park. So you can sign up to participate with that. And then there's also the Earth Day cleanup, which will be on August 23rd at 9 a.m. at Granville Gould Park. So a couple of local events that we have already scheduled where you can definitely participate and help clean up the community. Another thing I wanted to make people aware of, because ever since I you know, started working at the city, um, there are different communities that we, different committees that we have where you can participate and share your knowledge and information about what's going on in the city. The most recent one, I believe, is the um, Martin Luther King um, Committee. We're gonna, um, no, not Martin Luther King, I'm sorry, Juneteenth. And Sid, Ms., um, Councilman Sidmore can give you more information of, about that and the mayor. But I know we have different committees for different reasons that we get together and share information. So take a look on our city website, a list of all the committed committees. So you can see what you're interested in, and provide um, volunteer services that way. And then I'd like to give a shout out to our council members because they have very, very active social media pages. So Instagram for the younger folks, Facebook for a little bit older folks, but they let you know what they're doing in the community. So check out um, Brinces, Mitchell, um, Sidnor, DeWalt, I'm missing somebody. Anyway, I'm oh. sorry. Uh, Cole, yes. Check out our council members. They have very, very active social media pages and they let you know what's going on. With that being said, um, I want Mr. Mitchell to talk about his event um, tomorrow. So uh, obviously it's still up in the air with uh, the weather, the inclement weather, but we have, uh, I guess, a, a weather date, rain date of next Sunday. So I guess just look out in the morning to see if you know, we'll still have this event, but um, the the event basically is giving out vegan food, uh, hunger uh, hunger free zones. They go all over DC and Baltimore. Uh, it's a food truck, and they give out uh, vegan meals uh, to the community. So they'll be giving out vegan meals, um, saving ourselves. They've done a lot, you know, not only in DC, um, but also you know in the Prince George's in the Prince George's area. They'll be giving out uh, food as well. And then um, a local a local business, um, Karen Friends, uh, Karen Friends Clinic, they'll be doing uh, the PCR testing, the vaccinations, uh, and the boosters. So um, yeah, th that is a uh, that is a program that we have set up. Uh, as as the date is still set for tomorrow, but most likely it would be uh, next Sunday, uh, so the the twenty third, I believe it is. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And um, other than that, like. Um, Christine, she brought up a lot of different ways you can volunteer. And um, go to Miss Barr, get those cleanup buckets. Those mm -hmm. cleanup buckets are very helpful. I, I, I got a few last year and, um, you know, just with a few different individuals hosted cleanup. And I know that there were some people who joined us. I remember Delegate Lehman joined us. I remember Kenneth joined us, you know, one of the speakers. So, um, you know, just get out in your community, help beautify your community, um, however that might be. And uh, of course, Thanks everybody today for joining to celebrate the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and a legacy. Um, you know, my name is Martin. Martin means leader. And um, I would say to leave, leave you here, I am my ancestors' wildest dreams, but has the dream been completely accomplished yet? And that, you know, that's, that's all I got for you guys. And thank you, Mayor Mo. You are still here, so we're ready for closing if you have some remarks. Um, actually, I do. Just a couple things because I think it's very important on, uh, and it shows uh, your leadership and uh, the city's um, and your outreach. But I wanted to acknowledge um, Council Member Carl DeWalt, who's with us, as you said, um, Council Member Keith Sidnor, 
uh, who's with us as well. Also, uh, Delegate Jocelyn Pena Melnick is on the line. And I think uh, our delegates taking the time out um, today I says think, a lot as well. Uh, Delegate um, Mary Lehman, who's with us as well. And I think I saw Delegate Jazz Lewis, um, who is on the line, and he is actually running for the congressional seat here within the 4th District. So I did want to acknowledge them and uh, thank them for their time. And I see also our some of our city staff and management staff is on. But most importantly, um, let me also, I'm sorry, let me also acknowledge council, uh, County Council Member Tom Dernoga who's with us. So I want to acknowledge all of the elected officials that came on today. It's, uh, luckily, um, you don't have to go outside. It's not looking good right now, but um, we hope if you have to go out, uh, please take your time. Uh, streets are going to be very um, slick for a while. Our public works crews are out, so um, just take your time. But most importantly, thank you for taking the time to acknowledge a great American uh, hero, in my opinion, um, for uh, his dream and the dream that continues to live. And I think we are are doing that uh, with our part today. But as we heard from many of the speakers, we need to do it every day. We need to have respect for one another. We can have as many police officers and people out in the communities trying to bring people together. But until each and every one of us have respect for each other, we're not going to be able to move forward. And we need to get back to that. That's crucial of, of having a community uh, work together and uh, making sure that uh, all of us um, work together and more importantly, uh, respect one another. We all have differences of opinion, but um, it's crucial that we, we get back to that. So I want to thank everybody again for coming on. Christine, thank you very much for what you did. We appreciate all your work and all the speakers. They were very inspiring so thank you all very much thank you and with that we will end our program you all have a good evening <laughs> thank you we still on air now no, right? yeah i was checking to make sure we were off. Oh, I see business owners.